More than just about anything else in our modern world, maps are all around us. Maps are something that people are willing to look at long enough to learn something from and even inspire them to take action. Maps engage, maps inform, maps inspire. If a picture is worth a thousand words, maps are worth a thousand pictures. Maps have always been rich sources of data, communicating a large amount of information in a small amount of space, whether that space was, in the past, stone tablets, etched in the dirt, on copper plates, on paper, film, and today in digital form, on our phones, on our laptops, on our tablets, in our neighborhoods, on our buses, in our cars. How many of you have many paper maps at home? I do. Paper maps are useful, but they are limited. We cannot easily add information to them. We cannot easily update them. We cannot easily make them change scale. Paper maps are not easily transported or folded. <laughs> Digital maps, on the other hand, are more useful, mobile, versatile. They are revolutionizing the way that we navigate our world, how we understand our world, and how we can better enable our world for the future. Paper maps are still useful in the field, though, because technology can fail. Maps don't just tell us where things are. Maps help us understand why things are where they are. Why do hurricanes occur where they do and have the spatial pattern that they do? What about landslides are unique to the way they are arranged, the slope, the way that they're facing? That's the aspect. What direction and how far are the floodwaters down the street from my house right now? Ooh, real-time information that we can map. What direction are invasive species such as zebra mussels moving and changing and why? Today's maps, folks, aren't just graphics floating out in cyberspace. They're tied to a powerful computer database, a geodatabase, a geographic information system. The U.S. Department of Labor identified three key hot fields for the 21st century, biotechnologies, nanotechnologies, and geotechnologies. Today's maps are part of geotechnologies, geographic information systems. Geotechnologies also includes remote sensing, looking at the world from space, LIDAR data, UAV drone data. Geotechnologies also includes web mapping. Now, folks, what we've got here with our whys of where investigations is that geographic information systems is, it's like an elevator. You just, you just use it. It's, it works behind the scenes. So GIS enabled your phone to be assembled with the correct parts, supply chain management from all over the world. GIS allowed your package to get delivered to your house today and to millions of others of houses in the most fuel efficient, safe manner possible. GIS allowed you to pull up that app on your phone that says my bus in Vail is going to come down the street in four minutes and 30 seconds. That's what GIS can do. Let's use a web-based geographic information system, ArcGIS Online, for example, to look at plate boundaries, earthquakes from the last 30 days, and volcanoes. What is the relationships that you notice here? What are the spatial patterns that you see here? This is the locations of earthquakes related to their magnitude. What is the relationship between the locations of earthquakes and their depth? Hmm. What is the relationship between the locations of earthquakes and plate boundaries or volcanoes? How many cities are within 50 kilometers of the plate boundaries? What about earth earthquakes that are occurring in the, in the oceans? Do we care about those? Yes. Why? Possible tsunamis. 
we live in a 3D world, so it makes sense that we have 3D GIS tools at our fingertips. Here I'm using a 3D scene viewer to extrude earthquakes as cylinders. So that, why? Not just because I can, but so that I can understand the patterns better and do something about it. Let's turn our attention for a moment to demographic analysis, population characteristics, median age, at scales from national to local. Blue, older. Red, younger. Why is the population of Maine older than that of Texas? Scale matters. At the county level, why are the Great Plains older than that of the West? And here in Vail, why is this neighborhood older than that of of the neighborhoods to the north and to the west. We can add other information, some of which is crowdsourced. Citizen science, such as broken sidewalks, median income, commuting patterns, so that we can plan effective services to our communities with the goal of a sustainable community. We're asking a lot of questions here, aren't we, folks? A good map teaches you to ask a better question. What if we were to map all the attendees attending this Vail TEDx talk? Are these the patterns that you would have expected? Making, and this is key, sharing on the web this map took me all of five minutes with a web-based mapping system called ArcGIS Online. What would be in your top 10 list of serious challenges facing our world? Water quality and quantity biodiversity loss, economic inequality, food security, energy, migration, climate, crime. All of these have a location. They have a spatial pattern. Hence, they can be understood and grappled with with the use of geographic information systems. We can use our wise of where focal point to grapple with and solve these global issues that increasingly affect our everyday lives. The CDC, for example, uses GIS not just to treat illness, but to build wellness. By applying GIS to an ever-expanding number of disciplines, the maps through GIS are becoming the, the language of the planet. Even in your local community, having the zoning people, talking with the parks and recreation people, talking with the emergency management people, all around a common set of map data, with the goal being a smart city. But technology and data are only two parts of this, folks. For people to grapple with these global problems with this spatial perspective requires a population that can think critically and spatially, that has been immersed in deep and rich field experiences, and that can think holistically and across disciplinary boundaries. Think back to your last geography class. It may bring up images of mind-numbing memorization. What are the principal exports of Peru? What's the capital of North Dakota? Or, conversely, it may have sparked your, 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 uh, your interest in the world. I hope this was your experience. But if geography is so fundamental to understanding our world, why is geography so neglected? Well, our high-stakes, subject-divided, assessment-driven school system leaves little room for problem-based learning that GIS and GPS are a part of. That's what these students and I were doing on the Santo Domingo Pueblo in a semi-arid region where rainfall is scarce, soil is a precious resource. We were analyzing the amount of head-cut gully erosion with GIS. But schools and faculty, students, administrators are using mapping technologies in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics classrooms, in language arts, business, and other classrooms. Your help is needed to bring the thousands of schools that I've mapped here using map technology into tens of thousands of schools. Geo-mentoring is one way for you to share your mapping technologies with, with schools. And the education community needs your help to foster deep and rich and model deep and rich learning experiences. Maps are the wise of where. Maps are more relevant than ever before. Will you be a champion for deep, thinking, spatial thinking, and mapping technologies in education and society. How do I end this talk? I don't. You do.